Welcome to the First 40 Sports Show with the Goon Squad, Black Thor, Ice Water, and yours truly, Puma. We're going straight to the NBA, the eye test, Ice, your eye test on the playoffs so far. Man, it's so up and down, it's so bizarre and crazy. I mean, when you look at it, you look at starting off with Milwaukee uh, and, and uh, Miami, you know, just when you thought Milwaukee was going to run away with it right away, then the, you know, Giannis gets hurt and then they keep moving up. And before you know it, turn around, you know, Miami took advantage of the situation. So it, it's, it's uh, that part there. I think Giannis will be back. They should be okay. But if he's not back, if he's not healthy, things could change very quickly. Uh, Cause Miami is kind of showing you some things. Uh, the other part too would be um, that's uh that's Philadelphia, right? Philadelphia and then Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yeah, yeah. That that's uh Philadelphia and Brooklyn. I mean, Philadelphia is doing what they need to do. James Harden coming up, handling this business. The team overall uh, is doing well. Brooklyn, I like Brooklyn. They just young. They're young and they're, and they're trying to get it together. You got to give kudos to uh Jock Vine. Because they've had all kind of lineup changes, and they may be below 500 in their record, but the fact that they made the playoffs and they play real hard, I think they need to uh, keep him as coach. Play, They play solid, uh, and they try to give Philly a little run the last game, but it was a little bit too much. And last but not least, as I get off on the East, is uh, I know we got a lot of Knicks fans out here, and Knicks look good in game one. But somebody else was telling me it was guaranteed that the Knicks was going to sweep this. I was like, you got your rabbit ass mind. And uh, we saw that the Cavs, is, they came to play. And, and it's just interesting to see how – I love this matchup because the both teams won it, and you can see them going back and forth. But uh, Garland and, and the matchups, you see Brunson going at one another, uh, waiting for the big centers to step up for uh, for um, Cleveland. Uh, the one thing is about the Knicks, they are a little bit more undersized, so they kind of get up and down. They like to push and run. That kind of causes a bad matchup for Cleveland. But it's either feast or famine. And I'm sitting there going like, I want, I cannot wait for this series to continue. Overall, except maybe the Philly uh, matchup, I think it's good basketball. You know, you're looking at Atlanta. I know they're doing some – Atlanta's down, right? Atlanta down? Yes. Two of the Boston. Yeah, yeah. So certain ones are just really good basketball. Other ones are kind of like, eh, and I know we'll talk about the West later. But in the East, it's like the ones that are good, they're real good. And I think you, say, you can say – we'll talk later about the West – I haven't watched this much damn basketball in a long time. Stuff for the NCAA tournament that Black Girl won. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I haven't watched, the, the games have been good. I'm liking some of these young stars coming off. And when we talk about the West, I can't talk. I can't wait to talk about my boy Foxy, but I, I digress. All right. Black, Eastern Conference, man, what are you looking at? You know, it's interesting. Right? Other than the Boston Atlanta series, to me, it's been some pretty good basketball play. And I say, not to say, that series is not good. It's just that Boston is kind of dominating, kind of playing with them. So it's not really competitive to watch. But I'm going to start with the Knicks, man. I don't watch much of game one. That's going to be turning game two and watch. And I'm looking at, I know you said, that, what's the, the guy that came from Dallas that the Knicks just signed, the guard? Brunson. Brunson, yeah. I'm saying to myself, is this John Starks reincarnated? That this cat comes down, he dribbles the ball for like 15 seconds and just launches. I'm like, wait a minute. They giving him this green light, and they, they, to me, that's how the Knicks are big. They lost the game last night. He just shoot from everywhere, bang, bang, bang. And Reggie Miller trying to be nice, well, went in and came out. Damn that! How about pass the ball, getting some offensive flow? I just haven't seen that for the Knicks. So I don't think they're going for. I think Cleveland kind of basically stepped up last night. They could do a couple of things. I'm gonna tell you something, man. Harden is in rare playoff form, bro. He's in rare playoff form. Eight points. Here we go. Five turnovers. <laughs> <laughs> You can count on Harden, man, and the player starts. No matter what he's done in the regular season, you can count on him to kind of basically do this. Wait a minute, he, Black. Wait a minute. You were saying a couple of weeks ago about Philly. This is a different team. I, I, yeah. You didn't allow me to finish. You allow me to finish. <laughs> I'm still going to say, in spite of that, I think this is a different team. Because Mackie, I like the four. I like Mac. And if he wasn't there, this team would be totally different. But I think between him and LB, I think they're going to have enough. I'm not sure make it to the finals, but they're going to win a couple of series because – in spite of Harden, I think they know who you are, who he is. <laughs> I think they're not counting on him, and they're gonna go around him. And yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be okay for at least this series and possibly the next series. Um, Milwaukee man, I watched him even when Giannis was out there, they didn't look that good, bro. And I'm looking at them. Is this the same team that was kind of dominating? I just I don't know what it is. It's like almost like they 
came out of a closet and they were totally different. I mean, basically now they're playing one-on-one -on -one basketball, give it to Middleton, move out the way. That's not going to get it done, man. It's not going to get those role players that was astonished throughout the season. They kind of basically kind of stepped down. So I think Milwaukee's in big trouble. And that's where I think, in a sense, where Philly can kind of step up because if, if, if basically the Heat get past uh, the Bucks, which I think they will, I think that kind of opens the door for Philly a little bit. And really right now, the, the king of the East is, is the Boston Celtics. So Boston's kind of basically holding them to what they have to do, getting it done. That team is ready. They're, it's like they got a bad taste in their mouth from last year. They want to get that taste out of their mouth. So, yeah. But the East, in, in general, the play has been better than I thought it was going to be in the East. I must say that outside of, again, against Boston, Atlanta. I look at Atlanta, and I can't say that with all the teams that kind of played in, but Atlanta and Minneapolis, they didn't deserve to be in there, bro. And that's what I mean by the play in. But like I said, for the most part, there's some good basketball being played. I mean, I, I was excited to see how well they're being played and how the games are going. And honestly speaking, I haven't been this excited in the playoffs early round kind of checking the scores, checking who's playing tomorrow, what the case may be. So at this point, I'm hooked, man. I'm hooked. All right. I'm going to stay with you with the Western Conference, man. What's your eye test on the Western Conference? I got to give Brother Ice his kudos, man. He said uh, last week that the Lakers could beat – don't be surprised if they beat Memphis. <laughs> so I'm watching game one. I'm looking, and I'm here to tell you, man, that team is undisciplined, uncoached. Speaking of Memphis Grizzly. I don't care if job makes it back, whatever happens, man. Speaking of coming down, one player just takes off and do everything. That's what that team is, man. The center was battling. I give him credit. But um, Anthony, Anthony Davis, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if y'all see game one. What do you got? What do you, I can't move my arm. I can't move my arm. I think, I, I was saying to myself, when he came back out in the halftime, because everybody was like, you got to come out. We don't know. I think I think the owner, Jimmy Buss, called now and said, look here. <laughs> you, you get your on that court <laughs> oh, we remember this contract because there ain't no way in the world you go from I can't move my arm to come out and play the way he did in the second half bro. you just can't do it but I said this last week the trade the Lakers made and it's interesting I didn't say this last week but I thought about this after I said it Rob Palenka put this together not LeBron because LeBron wanted Westbrook so when he basically said this now allow Rob Palenka to be a general manager. Look what's going on with that team now, man. They're, those role players, these players, I mean, they're hitting shots, they're getting rebounds, they're playing D, and it's allowing LeBron basically to pick his moments. When he could do that, they're going to be tough. So they're probably going to get past Memphis with if that player comes back or not. And uh, they're going to be exciting to watch, bro. I'm not going to say they're going to win it all, but they're going to, you know, you know ESPN and TNT loves that because where he goes, the spotlight goes. It's going to be very exciting to watch. Um, let's get it, man. Sacramento. I don't know. I know Golden State's going home. I really do. I know they're going home, but I don't know if Golden State would put together four solid games and put out Sacramento out. In the season, when the series started, I wasn't sure. But at this point now, I think they're going to have two Golden State games. But I don't know if they can do that four times. I don't think they still have the energy, the mustard, the ketchup, the relish to put them away. <laughs> Before games, bro. I'm here to tell you right now. I just don't see it. Sacramento got something, man. I mean, Mike Brown deserved, I know he got the coach of the, he deserved more than that, bro. He took this team, bro. Man, their mentality is totally different. They're not scared. They're not, you know, Los Angeles hit his shot. Curry hit his shot. They're like, yeah. Fox, like, we ain't worried about that. We're going right back down and taking it to you. And it's like, Golden State's not used to that because Golden State always had a chance to punk Sacramento. And they can't punk them anymore. So at some point, Sacramento, when Sacramento goes up three, it could be three, two, three, one, whatever. When they go up three, I don't think Golden State's gonna be able to come back. I really, but that's a very exciting series, man. Phoenix series haven't really kind of had a chance to cool in too much. I saw they won last night. Um, Durant kind of, I guess he showed up into this thing. I'm, I'm not expecting much from the Clippers anyway, so it doesn't really kind of, I'm not surprised that they kind of lost game two. I haven't paid any attention to Minnesota and Denver. I'm just going to come out and say it, bro. I'll watch Denver next series. Again, Minnesota should not even be in there as far as I'm concerned. You could take Atlanta. I, you would have been better off taking Atlanta and Minnesota, keeping them out, giving Boston a bye, <laughs> giving Denver a bye. Let's do that in basketball from now on because put them on the court with them and make them look stupid doesn't make any sense. Ice, give me your eye test on the Western Conference. Yeah, uh, Denver, Minnesota. I mean, you kind of watch Denver doing like a little tune-up. 
you know, Minnesota's trying, but you know, they they miss some people and people they're not Denver don't have a lot of great chemistry. So I think Denver just kind of used them as a tune up. But uh hey, they made it, so they have the right to play. So we'll step over from there. Um Lakers and Memphis, man, look, I'm just gonna say this. M Memphis is young. They they're always they talk a lot, they run their mouth. Even when Jazz is healthy, they run their, they run their mouth. They play up and down, they play real fast, kind of play street ball in a way. And I, I agree with them being somewhat undisciplined. But I was telling somebody else that uh when you look at the Lakers and as it was stated earlier about them making the trade, think about it from the standpoint of after they made the trade, they have guys that are hungry, man. Guys that have not won championships before. Okay. You look at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is jumping out the gym. Uh D Lo, D Russ, D Russ is uh, doing this thing. Um, maybe not be hitting all the shots, but he comes in and plays his role real well. He realizes that he's playing with superstars and Hall of Famers and A D and, and LeBron and plays that role when he's splitting, you know, with uh uh with uh with uh you know Schrader. Uh so that's great. Also, Reeves is coming out playing out of his mind. And I tried to tell people this before. They did not want to listen to me, but that's okay. My man is coming to play. He shocked the hell whole world recently when my boy, former Gonzaga Wizard star, you know, Hachimura came out and was balling. Was shooting them threes. People was like, what the hell? I was like, man, that dude can play. These guys are hungry. They're really hungry and they're doing these extra things. And that's what you need when you have veterans like Anthony Davis and also with LeBron. You need those guys that just will give everything that they, they have and they don't care. And they did that. And the people were like, I didn't know he could play like that. But when you have that enthusiasm and a chance to possibly win, guys really get excited. Uh, Sacramento and Golden State, man. I have loved Fox since day one when he dropped 40 at Kentucky on Lonzo Ball. <laughs> That's been my guy. I always has. It was just a matter of time for him to get the right coach that pushes him along the way and also get a cast of people around him that can play. They are, I call them the island of misfit toys. I told y'all this. Nobody want to have them dudes. They did not even play up to their level. They just discard them off into that, that island. And now here you come to mastermind the Mike Brown coming on. You think about this. We have been waiting on Harrison Barnes to show us his real game forever. Since he left, when he went to North Carolina, since he left Carolina, we've been waiting on him forever. He's playing his butt off. So bonus is coming alive, looking real strong. Got a nice little run there too. Uh, you look at some of the other guys that are just coming out strong. And my guy, Monk, man, and they threw Monk away, literally threw him away. He get out there in Sacramento. I was like, damn, that's my Kentucky backcourt of Monk and uh, and Fox, I was like, okay. They just want to play really good basketball, and I love that from the standpoint of they're playing with high energy, as you said. And then I'm watching, and I'm looking at the, the screen, I'm like, yo, that's Murray from Iowa, the, the Lipper. They draft him. So they're, collectively, they're a really strong team. They're young. They have no fear. I love it when they hit the, the buzzer, when they, you know, when they the beam goes up. When they win games, I think that's amazing too. So I like them. I think Golden State is really they're giving a lot of effort. I'm not sure it's gonna be enough. I think getting Wiggins back late, not really knowing what's going on with him. And then Peyton, Peyton's playing his butt off though. I gotta get up to him. He's playing his behind off. But they don't think don't I'm not sure they have enough. I think they're I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to win series. And last but not least, Clippers and Phoenix. It's like who get the ball ass? Yeah. <laughs> I went to K last night. And Kawhi Leonard is I don't know. Kawhi Leonard is balling. He dunking on folks. I was like, oh, that's the old Kawhi. He getting a few motions. He don't say much, but he jumping around, getting all antsy. I said, damn, was that MVP Kawhi? I don't know if they're going to do anything because they really do miss Paul George. And, and your boy Russ is coming out here just running, you know, running through people. <laughs> like he, he, like he's he got terrorizing folks on the defense. I mean, KD like, is looking behind his back to see if, if Russ is behind there trying to turn to block his shot. It's, it's, it's amazing. Russ, but Russ he got a couple little nice little bounces, but he running like he just out of control. You know, like them little kids like Tasmanian Devil, the devil just running into the wall with no no purpose. But uh, it is like no team, neither one of these teams are playing defense. But it's great for uh, entertainment because Durant is doing this thing, and, but they just go up and down. Uh, Booker showed up real nice last night. 
I want to just watch it because it's straight offense, strictly offense. Uh, last thing on that is watching Durant do what he does. And as much as I know he's an old senior citizen, but if I watch another guard, uh, like another guard go by Chris Paul, like, hey, just run him by him, bro. Like, and he had a nice little game last night, but he can't do it consistently, which is really going to cause them issues. And I lied. Last point on this. Somebody, Mr. Williams, Coach Williams, somebody take DeAndre, DeAndre Ayton and show him what his role is on this team. Because I'm telling you, bro, he looks lost. He looks lost. Like, before it was bad enough, but now you have a plan with a guy like Durant. If you don't do nothing else but grab 10 rebounds a game, give us a double-double, block a few shots and get up and down the court, that's good enough. At times, it's like looking around like, am I supposed to be out here? I just That just bothers me because he's better than that. But you had to have some self-confidence somewhere. But great basketball so far. I like seeing some of the young players come out doing their thing. But great to see um, Mike Brown shine. Isn't that beautiful, though? Mike Brown plays Golden State, facing his old, old, old coach and old team. And they like, he just do that in practice. He know what we gonna do, don't he? And everybody like, Craig is like, yo, Clay, you got to step the game up because right now you one dimensional, bro. And Mike Brown got an answer, but it's a great basketball. I'm gonna keep watching. I hope it gets better as we move forward. But uh, great basketball. Well, this is a concern I have with Golden State. They they just didn't have a good road record, and um, they dropped two in Sacramento. And um, I'm gonna throw, roll this question out to to you, Black, and then then the ice. Is the Draymond Green experiment pretty much over at Golden State at this particular point? No, I'm not gonna say that, man. I mean, I, I you know, I, you know, I, I saw what he did. Was it stupid? Yeah, his leg did get held. I mean, he, he overreacted. That's what Draymond is, but he brings something to them that they need, bro. He does. So I'm not sure I'm gonna say it's over. Um, does he get in their way at times? See, I don't think he got in way there that night. Game one, man, Golden State was in that game, ball. So, I mean, they were in that game. They were shooting. It's just that sometimes, man, the team you play is not going to bow down to you. And Sacramento just didn't bow down. And Golden State is kind of used to teams, especially Sacramento, if, Clay, if, if they're hitting those shots, play with some, some remarkable shots. If those shots are hitting, they're kind of used to the other teams just kind of folding down, folding the tent. And I think to, to an extent, too, I think Golden State, beyond Draymond Green, I think their mentality has been – we're going to turn it on in the playoffs. And they did turn it on in game one. They did turn it on, but I don't think that they're going to be able to turn it on and get back in the finals. I don't think I don't think they're going to get past Sacramento. I really don't. But I don't think they're going to be able to turn it on. I don't think they're hungry enough this year. Mm. I think they're content. I think they think we can just show up and be in Golden State. We those, you know, we the boys, we the doves, we can get it done. I don't think that's going to fly this year, man. I just don't think that's going to get them through. I don't think they're going to They won a few games, but I don't hear again. I don't think they're going to take down four. And um, I think the thing with uh, Jay Wiggins earlier, man, not Jay, yeah, Wiggins that was out, man, I don't know if you guys heard, but they were saying that he found out a couple of kids he had. It wasn't his. Mm. So, wow. yeah, he found out. I think it was two or three kids he had. They're not his. Now, that's the word, how true it is. But when that happened, that's why he stepped away for personal reasons. Okay. Ice. Is the Draymond Green experiment over in Golden State? I wouldn't say that. I agree with Black. I'm not, I don't think it's over. But I think you just have to realize what he can bring to you, right? He may not be as energetic. He may not be such a focal point. Um, I, I think we saw it last year, even though they were talking about it. Clay Thompson was coming off an injury. But uh, Wiggins really stepped his game up. Wiggins stepped up. And also Steph Curry showed us that he was capable of not just shooting jumpers. He's, going, he's showing you more and more in this series, too. He can go to the rack anytime he wants to. And he's doing it with, with confidence, even though every time he uh, falls to the floor, he's looking for a foul. But that's the NBA. But he's really playing real well. But I think that they still need – you need a Wiggins, a healthy Wiggins, or a Wiggins healthy mentally and physically will be healthy right now. Peyton is playing crazy, but I don't think they had that extra guy. It's usually Clay Thompson. Clay is one dimensional right now. He can shoot that jumper and looking great, but he used to be able to play some defense, get yeah. back, and he's tr still trying to act like he's that same dude. And I, I don't see that. And I think if you don't come with that energy against against uh, Sacramento, they will get you. Like I told you, Monk is on a mission. I said, man, is he back in Kentucky? What the hell? Because I mean, he's looking like he playing mad. 
But he's playing mad with a positive sense. And most people don't understand that. You can be angry and play well because you use that energy. He is just like, uh, y'all didn't choose me. Y'all was going to cut me. Y'all was going to get rid of me. Oh, y'all, he, he's got all that stuff in his brain. And he's flowing. I love Sacramento, especially Mike Brown. I'm so happy for him because I think he deserves so much more. Plus two, again, that's my team, the item of misfit toys. Yeah, I, I like the referees. I like to him up real quick. Uh, I like the fact, like you said, well, Curry's not getting the foul. If you notice, man, the refs are kind of putting their whistles away and letting them play. They're not letting the game stop, 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 go. They're allowing them to play. If you ain't basically following, like it's the 80s, they're not saying anything. But I love it, man. I love it. Let them play. It's a play on basketball. Don't go inside and all finesse and think they do it. We're not, we're not doing that. Yeah, Booker got caught up with that when um, Russ blocked his shot. Blocked his shot. wasn't a foul. He's looking at the ref. Russ takes the ball and bounces it off him, and it gives the Clippers the ball back. Stop arguing with the refs. You're not in the play. Yeah. Let them do their, their job. You do your job. One of the things I was telling a, a buddy of mine who's a Knicks fan, because he was texting me about the Knicks last night, I'm like, the Knicks got what they wanted out this trip. They got a split. Uh, this is playoff basketball, best four out of seven. So they're not going to go in and, and, and win both games in Cleveland. Usually teams that get a split fare a little bit better than teams that go 0-2 um, and not get that split. So we've been watching basketball for a long time. And so if you go 0-2, usually you're not going to win that series. But if you can split, you might go six, seven games in, in that series. And, am I right or wrong, Ice, on that? No, I agree with that. I mean, you want to break that home court advantage. But I think part of it has to do with uh, are the teams equally balanced in talent. You right. know, and like, like Thor said, you know, I didn't want to say it. I'm glad he said it. Cause y'all be on me when I say it. I just try to tell the truth. I talk about dude looking like John Starks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish you could bring bringing that up. That's a bad. Why? Thing. It's true. Nick fans, Nick fans have like traumatic experiences, man, and you keep. I, mean, it, I get it, but that don't make you like taking the bandaid off. Taking the bandaid off. It's, but it's just true. Y'all get caught up in, or they say y'all, but some of y'all get caught up in somebody gonna be super hot. This ain't Walt Frazier, dude. If you two, if you one for ten, pass the damn ball. It might be somebody else's night. You two for 17. Oh, he I know he can turn on any time. That's why you ain't got no damn rings. You got to use the IQ, bro. That's what New York basketball is supposed to be about. You know what I'm just saying? You're supposed to be smarter. IQ. You're supposed to use your IQ realizing you don't have it tonight. Give it to somebody else. That's why Pat Ewing don't even want to talk about this shit no more. Because they're never using him properly. Everybody's trying to get there. When you got to use a big center like that. He never was used to properly. I'm just saying that's for another another day when y'all want to talk real Nick basketball. Y'all never use that man properly. You looking at them damn guards shooting deep, trying to relive Bar Bernard King's heyday. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Black, am I right or wrong? You know, one and one. You know, team gets to split. It's like it's a plan because I, I don't think a team in the NBA thinks that okay, we're gonna sweep a team. We're trying to get home court advantage. If we can go into their home court, win at least one. That gives us a little bit of advantage unless, instead of going 0-2. No, you're right, man. You're right. But I will say this. The teams, the dominant teams, they want to win every game, bro. The split is not it's, – it's, it's cool, but you want to take – you want to take – you want to take two. You look at um, Boston, look at Sacramento. They want – you know, they want both. Sacramento play like, no, we're not allowed them to split. But no, we want both. So, to me, if you're a dominant, you play that way. But I think with the Knicks, man – they're not a dominant team. And I, I'm looking at the cat that came out with um, Zion. What the hell is he doing from Duke? I'm looking at him like, bro, you've been in the league long enough. You've been quiet. I mean, right now, you should be shining as a Nick. You should be shining. And what's name just got traded there? He's out shooting you everything. It's like he don't want the ball. And for a minute, I thought he was a major. I thought what's name was a major Carmelo Anthony. That's all he does, a dribble, dribble, shoot. I'm like, wait a minute. That's all you got for offense? I haven't watched Knicks for all years. This is my first time really kind of paying attention. But I'm looking at what's the name? Yeah, the cat from Duke. I'm like, are you even trying to cut to get the ball, take your shot? I mean, he he played haphazard defense. But the Knicks, realistically, you got to find a way to get Randall down low. Let's get real. Let's get Randall down low. Stop playing around and let the thing happen from there. Randall, if he getting the ball at the free throw line, that's the wrong spot for him, bro. You too big to be trying to go all the way drive to the basket, bro. Get down there. Let's play some real old-fashioned Nick basketball. There's nobody on there. There's nobody down low, in my opinion, on Cleveland that can handle Randall for a whole game. It shouldn't be. That team is not built that way. Get down there, bro. Get dirty. Make it happen. 
and you can win game three and four in New York. All right, let's move to NFL news and Jalen Hurts gets a contract extension. And I want to know from you guys, how is this going to impact Lamar Jackson and his contract? Um, you know, woes, because I've been saying all along, and I know me and Black been going at this a long time, brother needs an agent. You see what Jalen Hurts' agent, who is a sister, got him the highest paid NFL player currently. I think Lamar Jackson is in over his head, and he needs an agent. Black? Well, I'll say this. I'm not going to say he doesn't need an agent, but I, I think Lamar Jackson is fixated on what's going on in Cleveland, bro. And you're not checking out the landscape. And that's the problem that he's having. He's look. He's looking at, he's trying to top that 230. And if, if you got to be smart to realize, we don't play, we don't play a game. We're not around the circuit. But bro, we all can see the owners are not doing that again. That's, that's, that they're not doing that again. And you're trying to fight that and make that happen. You want to ship by yourself, agent or not. Agent or not. And that's where you look at the contract that, I mean, he, he was just awarded. This gentleman just awarded. It's friendly. He's getting 110 the moment he signs the contract. 110 the moment he signs. So you mean to tell me you can't do something similar? And it's going to be total 180. And I said this a while ago. Your guarantee money should be 200 Guaranteed. That's what you be shooting for. Forget that 230, but don't act like you want it all be guaranteed. Basically, like he's doing, have some sign up front and the rest is guaranteed. You got to kind of find a way to be creative. Lamar's sitting there looking like, you know what, I want MVP, but bro, let's be honest. You ain't done much in the past couple of years. Sometimes you ain't been available. And the thing about hers and, it's, and his agent, she, she's smart because she strike when the iron was hot. This cat just had a basically MVP season, took you to the took you to the Pro Bowl. I mean, not Pro Bowl, took you to the Super Bowl. And she's like, what are we gonna do? What, 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 really, what are we gonna do? Guess what? Don't have no trade clause with that. And that's what I'm saying. So Lamar's like basically, and I, I, I've said this numerous times, we can go back and forth and whatever. He lost all his leverage when he put his ass in the field last year, bro. He lost all his leverage when he went on the field. If he would have basically sat out the first two weeks by week three, especially if they lost the first two games, Lamar Jackson could have had a contract. Maybe not the guarantee 230, but he would have a contract. Ice, now, I, I, I read and I heard that he had a similar contract as, as Hertz, but he, he didn't want to sign it. It was a similar one. It wasn't the exact same, but he mm -hmm. didn't want to sign it. And so I, that's why I think that this is where an agent can say, listen, let me break this down to you so you understand exactly what they're offering you. Yeah, I mean, I saw that too where they mentioned that uh, they could play around with the numbers and he wouldn't be so locked in if he wanted to leave and be a lesser, but you could get it. be a higher value for a lesser time. So, and that's what I think you should be looking at if you can't get the big money. But again, like I said, I think uh, part of it is, um, like, as Blackthorn mentioned, that you got to strike when the iron is hot. Um, the Ravens have been destroying that offensive football team for quite some time, and they've been blaming it on uh, Jackson when he come around with all these nine tight ends, as I say. So it's not cute as it used to be and not as pretty as it used to be, although they think he's very talented. And I think part of it's coming down to is what is his real worth now, okay? You know, of course, we knew early on a lot of people didn't think he should have been playing quarterback in the first place. And, and now it's to the point, if we keep him, are we going to win? Can we use Hunley or somebody like that, uh, get a back, not a backup quarterback, a quarterback that can be functional and lead us if we get our defense up again and get a decent running game? That's the question is, is he going to be worth it? And, and the question again is, what does Lamar want? Does he want the money or does he want to try to win? Because I'm telling you, you go to Indianapolis, like I said before, you ain't going to win no damn ball games, bro. You ain't winning no game. It's all about the cash. So what do you want? And, and that's the whole thing too, where, it's, I don't think it's by coincidence that the NFL is saying, we're not doing that Deshaun Watson thing no more. I don't think it's by coincidence because how does Jalen Hurts get his money? Right? You know, oh, yeah, he's a great guy. He's nice uh, for the league and whatnot. Don't worry about it. Whatever he gets, whatever we give him, we get, you know, and he's not trying to gorgeous or anything, take too much. But Lamar Jackson's proven that 
he's beaten, defeated all the naysayers, and he's done miracles with a little bit of talent at all. He doesn't get anything for it. He's not getting what what he really really wants uh, for his talent. So, and you can say agent, that's cool, and all. Maybe go get an old girl. But then again, the question is, even if you get an agent, what are you looking for, and is it reasonable at this point? You tried to go get the two and some change. They looked at you like hell, nah, dog. We give you that thirty-two, though. You get thirty-two tomorrow. But the question is, what's realistic? And what does he want? You wasting time or whatever to a point where, you know, I often agree with Black Thor, but I might be with him on this. In order if you get some real decent money, you might have to sit your ass out. Yeah. The longer you wait. And and the other thing, too, is lastly, uh, Travis next week, Doc. You know, they might be looking like, let me not just go and get rid of him so we can move on. Travis next week. One thing I wanted to add, man, I, I, I remember watching the playoff game when they when they went in this past season. And you think about this. Without Lamar, without Lamar, this is kind of basically pushing what Ice just said. They were a fumble away from winning that football game, bro. A fumble. If homeboy would have just ran instead of trying to put it out there, if they scored that touchdown, more than likely they would have gone to advance beyond. And I, I, I got to believe the owner of the Ravens sat there and said, you know what? Why give him all this? Because the 32 they're offering right now, that's an insult, bro. That's an insult. It really is. That's an insult that they're offering them right now. Basically, they're saying, we don't really want you. We want what we can get from you. We don't want you anymore. And that's what, to me, that's when I, when I first saw that, I was like, that's an insult, bro. When the Giants quarterback is making more than you, and then this cat here, it's going to make 50 mil while you're making 32. Bro, that's an insult. So he's running around and I, everybody's saying it. I'm MVP, bro. He was MVP three years ago. Damn, that three <laughs> years ago. That's like Cam Newton coming out saying it right now. You know what I'm saying? That's my point. <laughs> you're not the MVP in the league right now. And these other quarterbacks, Lamar, whether you want to believe it or not, they're either one that's got signed. They have caught up to you, bro. You're not the only game in town that's running and getting it done. So you need to take something just as good as, as homeboy just got and keep it moving. That 230, get that out of your head. They're not giving that to you. They're not. No team is going to give that to you. That if our owners have said, we're not doing it. Well, here again, that's fine. If that's the part that made it, I don't think he totally understand. They're basically saying, we're not giving, not only to you, anyone is going to get that. The NFL do not want to pay again a guaranteed full contract. That looks that looks like the NBA. They're not doing it, bro. They're not doing it. Yeah, it, it, it's a, a tricky situation. I, I want to just, um, you know, I want to wait until after the draft to see what, what the parties do. Uh, but uh, kudos to that sister that that uh, is the agent for Jalen Hurts. She was on Twitter, like, uh, talking about, let's back up the Burns truck. <laughs> Let's get this done. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. This is and this is. I, I saw this today, and this kind of brings into this. You know, people are calling the 49ers for for Lance. Yeah, and I hear uh, um, um, old boy from uh, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers. The 49ers are, are talking about because the Jets and and the, the Green Bay Packers won't give up on. I mean the. Um, I think the Jets won't give up on a first round pick yeah. or something like that. So the 49ers are like, we'll give up a first round pick. Come on over here. Come on home. So they they want to, they want to, they're thinking about trading lands. What does that yeah. tell you? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, teams have been calling and, and wanting, to, you know, wanting to see. And he's coming off an injury. So, yes. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't want an MVP. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Let's st stick with some more news. Uh, Ice, the Washington Commanders deal. I guess they're waiting for the NFL to pull the trigger on this one. What do you think? Man, I tried to tell y'all last week about that Josh Harris, Matty Johnson thing. It just made, it made sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Down the line, trying to set some things up. You got all the, you know, you check all the boxes. It makes sense for the league, particularly Washington. Uh, Magic can play again in, in this type of situation with Josh Harris. And, uh, and, and, when you hear the Dan Snyder's like just gonna walk away quietly, I mean, 
NFL is like, oh, okay, we again, like I told you, all they need now is, and, and the controversy still coming. Go ahead and uh, get that Lamar Jackson trade going with with the enemy over there, bro. I'm just trying to tell you about just the dominoes is falling. You might as well. Hey, look, he 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 need to go somewhere. He need to go somewhere. Well, I go to Indianapolis. You come over to Washington. You ain't got to really move nowhere. You know, you ain't got to move the truck. Mom and them still at the house. You just kind of move around, do transit. Because you might have to make sure they good. Don't nobody want to move to Indianapolis. They be like, we ain't going to have no Indianapolis. We want to stay on the East Coast. We're comfortable. You got the little mini mansion rolling and all that stuff. You got to set your parameters right. And I think that he's looking at it that way like, I could do Washington. I got a little talent over there. I could do Washington. And you like the coach, Ron Rivera. So things are set up, and the way that the 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 ownership is taking it through is smooth, right? When you heard my man uh, was a uh, Jeff uh, step back, yeah, yeah, he's like, okay, now it's like for us, like all oh, Snyder and all Snyder's like Magic and old boy we might be able to get a few few tickets to the movie scouts and all that other stuff. We're just gonna let it go by now. Just now they're getting it together. It's gonna move forward because they want some positivity in Washington because you get positivity in Washington. After all of the red skins crap and everything, and now you get a real owner, a smooth ownership with a team that might win some games. And you know the Redskins start winning again. Oh my God. Their fans are nuts. Redskins slash com uh commanders. My bad. I can't I, I'm old. Y'all have to forgive me. But <laughs> they, them coming back around is gonna be great for their franchise. And then also too, if they can battle with, with Baltimore. So I think it's a good move. I'm glad to see them moving forward. Snyder's time to roll, bro. Let let people move on and let Magic get up in the White House, chilling over there and doing this thing. And let's get some decent football in Washington. And this is from a Dallas Cowboy fan. Hey, hey, hey Black Magic. Hey, I'm, I'm speaking to you, Magic. Hey, the commander's going to need a show. Chocolate sir? City, baby. Chocolate City, baby. Look at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The ghouls will travel. <laughs> like what do you think about this deal man i would tell you man i'm gonna take a different approach i mean i hear about the chocolate city i hear all that but i looked at it like this a couple of weeks ago nfl told jeff bezos we already got you for amazon on thursday night mm -mm. we have this lawsuit coming up that says that we don't hire African-Americans, African-Americans, we don't hire them. Who's these owners? Wait, mm -hmm. so we take 6 million from them, tell the former owner to shut his mouth, we roll that in the court, we look like we like the blacks. <laughs> like we like the blacks. That's, I'm, I'm serious, man, and I'm not a conspiracy therapist, but how do you basically squash the noise? How? NFL is good at squashing the noise, bro. When they want a Kaepernick to stop kneeling, who do they run to? They're great at squashing the noise. It's so funny. They sold their rights from, they yanked their rights of the contracts over from DirecTV for the, for the um, football. I mean, the Sunday night, I mean, Sunday football. They Google grabbed it. More money. Google grabbed it, right? Cool, like Cookie Monster. I saw an ad for the bus name. For the first year, they're going to take $100 off. Go get this on Google for $100 off. NFL are genius, bro. They're geniuses. Behind closed doors, they're smart as hell. So I believe, I'm happy that these, you know, magic part of it is all great, all gravy. But to me, if you tell Jeff Bezos, yeah. there's a reason why. Yeah. Politically, it's a better move. I'm happy for it. I am. Trust me, I love it. But politically, and as I said, in Washington, there's no better place. Think about the first NFL black quarterback that won a Super Bowl. What's he, what, 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 what happened to that? Yeah. NFL didn't lose track of that. They didn't lose track of that, bro. They didn't. So come on. Like you said, with everything that happened on with it, what was going on before, they got the Congress looking at the sexual harassment. You hire, you let them own it, basically. Hey, can I throw one other thing in there? Mm -hmm. Of course, and like he said, they know what they're doing. I've been trying to tell y'all for years. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to throw the other thing, too. Ironically, picture this. Take a moment. Think about this. The gentleman that was the, the instigator of the lawsuit 
is on his second job since creating the lawsuit. Hmm. Hmm. Number two. Number one, two, one, two. How long you think that's gonna last with this lawsuit? And how many people we gonna have? It's also now trailing off. People disappearing. You ain't heard nothing from him now. Right. Heard nothing. He like, I got you ready for the season. I got another job. I'm gonna <laughs> wife like, you better not leave that damn job. He like, oh baby, we going to Denver. You know, whatever we get ready. You know, you know, or San Diego, or wherever hell he at. We we he got another job. We have Pittsburgh going over here now. And before you know it, they're gonna keep bobbing and bobbing till he might get another head coaching job somewhere. Uh, I'm then, yeah, but then, but you you sitting there going like you got another head coaching job. I'm like, we remember that lawsuit? I mean, what lawsuit? This is a lawsuit. <laughs> Let, let's move on. I don't want to talk about Brian Flores. No boy. Um my boy, our boy, uh, DeMar Hamlin, <clears throat> here to return to the NFL. I don't know how I feel about this. I, I know, you know, people who work all their lives and want to play in the NFL. He's cleared to go back. Uh, I know that um, he needed to play more to, to get the benefits of being an NFL player. He hadn't reached that point yet. Uh, your thoughts on this, Ice? I mean, I look at it this way. And I understand people, it, it was what we saw on TV was – devastating it was it was you know horrifying you didn't know i mean man literally basically almost died on the field right literally died somebody had to reset you know bring him back to life but you know how it is when you, you're playing the game and the money has to do with it too and if he's healthy bro why not man i mean dude check check the box and see if he's okay i mean you can't play you can't be scared the rest of your life and they say it's okay, and, and there's no real damage from the standpoint he can play again. Why not? He's probably not gonna play no ten years or nothing. But if you want to get out there and see if he can still do it, hey man, the story just continues to get better. You know how they do. That's that that story that just keeps evolving, and they just go like, you know. And then it's it's become a Disney movie and stuff. I ain't mad at what it is. What it is gonna come? Yeah, the triumphant return. Yeah, 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 you know Brian Piccolo, you know all that, you know all of them. You know, all the little songs and stuff that they have, you know, uh, somebody playing uh, in a certain role. So why not? If he can do it and he's healthy, throw him back out there. Just don't stay too long because, you know, we we know NFL is not for long. Get your pension, get your money, get set up. Also, too, since you have done so well uh, or your team done well with raising money and things of that nature, when you were, you were, when you were sick or when you were out, you might want to look at trying to get a role with the league. That's what I'd be doing. Like, well, you know, I, I brought some great publicity. Can I, can I get a little role on the side? You know what I'm saying? A little something in the back where I can just keep moving, working for the league. That way you keep your paper rolling. People will see you. Oh, you remember that wonderful miracle when Cincinnati brought him back to life and all, you know, just keep rolling, man, rolling and rolling. Positivity, another NFL great attribute. <laughs> yep. A movie by Amazon and star Michael B. Jordan. Uh, what are your thoughts about this, man? Yeah, I, I um, isolated out for the most part as far as the money part, and I think that's played a big part with him, man. I, I really do. I mean, even for his future, what can happen with movies and stuff of that nature, I will accept that, but I don't want to see him back on the field, bro. Just a part of me. I don't want to see him back. I just don't. I don't want to see him back. I just, I prefer that he didn't, but I understand if he chooses to play, like you, I said, they clear them. And for what he, like you said, he, he leaves now, he leaves with nothing for the most part. He, he leaves with nothing at all financially. So he's kind of forced to go back. His whole life has been dedicated towards being here. So I get it. It's just that to me, I just, and he's probably going to do well. You probably stay healthy, but some things you see, you don't, it's like watching a, you, you, you watch a crash. You don't want to watch it happen again. You've seen it once, you've seen it enough. So that's what I feel about. I wish him the best, though. I wish him the best. And how we can capitalize on it financially, do so, bro. Without any shame. I'm not, I'm serious in that. Capitalize on it, man. What movies, whatever it could be, go get it. Be careful, bro. We're rooting for you. Ice, Major League Baseball report. And Tampa Bay dropped three since the last time we talked. So, Hello. Yeah, but they still 16 and three. Don't you get too excited? <laughs> the Yankees went from second to third place. In the American League East, Toronto is now in second place. And also, my man, you know how he does it on the big stage, Shohei show Otana, went deep 
in Yankee Stadium the other night, baby. Dude, in Yankee Stadium. Dude is one of the best, if not the superstars in this league right now. But uh, again, with the East, again, Tampa Bay is leading at 16-3 and three in the American League East. Toronto second place. And those struggling-ass Yankees, 10-7. Season's over for the Yankees. Anyway, moving on to the Central American League Central. Minnesota's leading that division with a 10 to 7 record, followed by the Cleveland Guardians, not the Indians. Cleveland Guardians are 10 and 9. And uh Detroit is 7 and 10. Just uh one of the bad teams in that division so far. Moving on to the West American League. Texas Rangers are still holding up. They lead that division 12 by uh three games, uh 12 and 6. The LA Angels with uh, Otani are nine and eight, two and a half back. Astros are eight and ten, not playing great baseball, but they're only four back, so it's still close there. Moving on to the National League East, the Atlanta Braves are in first place, fourteen and five, followed by the Young Mets, twelve and seven, two games behind. Miami Marlins, ten and nine, four uh, games back. The struggling Philadelphia Phillies. 8 and 11. Again, it's real early, man. I'm just giving you guys a, a little eye taste of what's happening. These things can change real quickly. Uh, in the central, Milwaukee leads that division. They're 14 and 5. Cubs are 11 and 6, only two games back. Pittsburgh is trying to make a little run. 12 and 7 in third place. The Reds, the Reds, the Reds. 7 and 11, last place. Looks like that's where they're going to be for a while. In fact, the Reds had one of the lowest uh, attendance uh, crowds in the history of baseball uh, and, and their franchise as well a couple of days ago. Really sad. And then finally in the West, uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks are 11 and 8. They lead the Dodgers by two games who are 9 and 10. Padres 9, 11, 2 and a half uh, back. San Francisco is 4 back. Colorado is 6 back. And baseball is going to pick up a little bit. Like I said, we still got, uh, still got a whole few little things going on. Y'all just stay, stay tuned because I know Black Door is still waiting for some stuff. Black Door, what you waiting on, man? You wait, you waiting on certain seasons to come up or anything? But uh, are you still? I'm going to go to the George Foreman Grill for some of these reports. Or am I going to uh, go charcoal, man? I haven't decided yet. I might, I might, I might have to. I might, I might get a little hibachi grill and put it right here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give us some thought. You're in, you're in the back like <laughs> <laughs> like you're at, at Benny Hanna's. <laughs> I'm watching, man. I mean, I'm just happy the Yankees lost there in third place. Oh, man, place. so much hate. So much hate. <laughs> you know, I, mean, you, I mean, you live up here in the Northeast, man. You, all you see is that emblem all year long. It's like, you got to be kidding me. It's football season. I want to see Yankees cap. <laughs> yeah. All right, Black. Questions from the squad. You know, it's interesting, man. We never cry when a coach in college football loses his job. But I saw a list the other day, man, potential jobs, potential college coaches that are on the hot seat. We don't talk about them too often when the season starts. I figure I'll start this off. I'm only going to drop two names, Jimbo Fisher and Ryan Day. And I, I, I want to get your guys' opinion on both of those two names, Jimbo Fisher and the coach of the Ohio State. I <laughs> well, I got to go first. That's some good shit anyway. But it's like, <laughs> I'm going to start with Jimbo Fisher. Uh, I mean, you got to realize where he is and, and what's going on. I think he least, uh, you can say he's on the hot seat. But the question is, he finds a way to win a couple games during the year that are just, you don't expect him to, right? He beat some decent teams and they want more. They want championships. Not sure that's ever going to happen. But my question is, if you if you get rid of him, who are you gonna bring in that's better? They keep doing this carousel over and over, like they're gonna get somebody else that's gonna lead Texas AM to the national championship. It's like there's somebody out there waiting. Uh, I mean, you know, what you bring back, Urban Meyer? Anyway, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> joke, kidding, ha ha ha, <laughs> real joke, real joke. So I don't know. I mean, I see what they're trying to do, but I think they should really focus on the assistant coaches and getting those players to make the damn plays because we all know there's a couple of seasons that they clearly should be Alabama. They clearly – so it's about making plays now. You, you're you not that far away. I ain't saying about winning a national championship, but you might be able to win a few bigger games. We might put you in – prepare you up a little bit up the ladder. And uh, Ryan Day. Okay. 
Let me say this. I don't know how to say this very quickly. So we can move on. I understand that people are talking about Ryan Day's on the hot seat. He's lost to Michigan twice back to back. But contrary to belief, there are a lot of Ohio State fans that think Michigan beat Michigan is everything and all. It's everything. It does mean a lot. But again, in the modern day times, if you have the ability to still move forward, which they were this close to winning the national championship despite beating uh losing to Michigan, it's gonna be okay. And also, too, are you have you lost your mind? Have you been watching the recruiting classes? Ohio State just keeps they they are now wide receiver you. If y'all don't know that now, the last three years, the wide receiver you offensive uh player of the year, Garrett Wilson. Second was uh my boy uh down Olave down in New Orleans. You probably got uh, Jackson coming out and, and Nick Bay, what have you, going to be the number one wide receiver coming out. You got Marvin Harrison Jr. Going to be probably the top wide receiver in college football. And they just picked up a couple four and five uh, stars coming out. And when they had the number one re uh, quarterback for 24, he decided to go over. I guess he's going to Michigan now. They just picked up some dude. They call him Air. I think it's Nolan. He a four-star, is an amazing player. So with all that being said, you bringing in all this talent, people jumping on the bandwagon, and you talking about he on the hot seat? How many teams in America would love to be this damn close to winning the national championship? So if you let him go, somebody else is going to pick him up, and he's going to be okay. But I can't see Ohio State, Gene Smith doing that. If you keep a basketball coach around that lost 20 games for the first time in 100 years down there in Ohio State basketball, you're going to let this man go because he lost twice to Michigan? It's going to get better. It's going to get better. So don't worry about it. Calm down. There's no way, particularly right now, he should be on the hot seat because if they would have beat Georgia, they win another national championship. But a lot of what is. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what the folks in Ohio are thinking about if, if they do this. And and Ice, you 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 pretty much said it all. Uh, it, it will be asinine to fire that coach. But Jimbo Fisher, it ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun. I remember when you left Florida State and you couldn't wait to run up out of there to go to Texas A&M. Now they want to get rid of you. And it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. And I knew this was going to happen to him because I don't think he's that great of a coach. You had your chance to build that team and to, to, to go in there and beat Alabama. And you, you won a few games, but it's not enough because they were expecting a whole lot from you. You said you were going to deliver a whole lot, and you haven't. So, again, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. And now they're looking at you saying, you know what? Buyer's remorse. Black? Jimbo's history, bro. <laughs> Jimbo's history. I'm just going to say it right here. Jimbo's done. And don't be surprised, next year on this time, we might be talking about LSU football coach, too. He's another one. Watch for this season right here. To me, this is make or break a season. When they come out and they, you know, kind of progress a little bit, I think it's cool. They take a slide in the SC. Oh, man, he's done at LSU. He's done. But Jimbo's done. But like you said, he talked all that junk. You even came out last week, I mean, last year and got to a spat with the old man over at Alabama. Bro, you got to win at SEC. You can't talk, just got to win. So he hasn't been doing that. I think he's done. Ryan, I'm going to tell you right now, man. Have your agent start looking for jobs in the NFL, bro. <laughs> win or lose. Have your agent start putting fielders out there. You ready to kind of leave there because, like, I spelled it out. I don't care if you don't beat Michigan for the next 10 years. The, you, the way that team drafted, the way they look good every year, the way he basically coaches, forget about Michigan. I've seen Ohio State play the first half. I'm like, who's that in the field? They come out in the second half with the change in adjustments. That cat can coach, just simply flat out coach. So my point is in, basically start putting fillers out there on the field. Because to me, I think you're better than half of the coaches in the field. I see on Sunday anyway, bro. So don't let, let them do say what they want. I feel what they feel. But if they fire you, be prepared. Already have the fillers out. Now I'm ready to leave Ohio State. Guarantee you. You'll be an NFL job waiting to put your name in it, without a doubt. Ice? You have a lot. You have a – we're looking at the NFL draft coming up, and we're talking about the number one team uh, having number one pick is the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Houston second. 
there's a lot of debate. Now they're saying that Alabama's looking at Bryce Young. And not, I mean, Carolina's looking at Bryce Young uh, to being the number one pick. And one of the things they're saying is they like him because they think he's very aware. I'm talking about Young, that is. He's consistent, and, and they like the way he thinks, and he's easy to coach. There are now rumors saying that Stroud is difficult to get along with coaches, and he's hard to coach. And I'm like, maybe he's just challenging you to make sure you give him what he needs. I like Garrett Wilson when he said that to the folks in, in uh, New York Jets. When he told his quarterback, yo, we better than this. You got to quit bullshit. We need to make some plays. We got to win. They want to win. So my question to you guys is, can, is it, if you think a guy got a bad attitude or he wants to win and he has, cannot get along with coaches, does that deter you from drafting him? Black, I would say this, man. There's a lot of politics that go into the draft, boss. Meaning that the people that might be saying that about him, want him to basically fall to Houston, bro. Let me say this. They want him to fall. They want him to go to Carolina. His agents could be putting that out there. Got people out there saying, oh, man, he's tough. Because trust me, Carolina talked to Ohio State coaches. They know what's going on. But they dropping that out there because they don't want – they want him to fall down to number two. They want to play with Houston head, and it's working. I, I like the uh, Alabama quarterback, like I said last week. I don't trust Alabama quarterbacks, bro. I just don't do it. I won't do it. I'm sorry. I just don't trust them. <laughs> what's that? Like, what's they said a long time ago? You can't trust them. You can't trust them. You can't win with them. You can't trust them. You can't win. So I'm saying it now. I think it's working. So I would not be surprised. They're trying to basically, they don't want the Ohio State quarterback going there. They're throwing all this out, this fill out, this noise out there, and Carolina's biting it. They're turning around. They're grabbing it. Oh, yeah, he's stuck to me. Are they going to take him number one? And guess what? Even came out the other day. I think I saw the headline about a week ago that Houston's like, well, you know what? We, we may not even take a quarterback this year. That's what they say. We may not. Imagine Houston don't take a quarterback this year. We may not take one. They know who they want, and it's not the Alabama quarterback. It's going to fall just the way Houston wanted because Carolina is being dumb enough to buy it. Yeah, one, uh, two things. Nobody's talking about the quarterback at Tennessee, Hooker. Yes, sir. Everybody's been talking about him, and we thought last year that that guy was the mm -hmm. guy that was ready. Well, I was watching an interview with Isaiah Thomas uh, not too long ago, and he said he was one of the first people who scouted uh, uh, Kevin Garnett. And he said he was real quiet about it. He went to a playground, saw him play, like, in the summer league or something like that. He uh, Somehow he hooked up. He, he went to Farragut. He was in South Carolina. He went to Farragut here, high school on the west side of Chicago. And there were people talking about his attitude, all that stuff. And Isaiah Thomas was one of them talking about his attitude. But he was like, this is my next player. I got to go get it. I got to go get it. <laughs> so one day, Kevin McHale called him up and said, listen, man, Zeke, give me the truth. What's up with, with Kevin Garnett? He was like, he said, I got to be honest with you. If you don't get him, I'm going to get him. And the rest of his history went to Minnesota. So a lot of this is kind of jockeying politics, you know, kind of putting something out there right before the draft to scare teams away because teams know who they want. They know other teams want them. But if they can put a little negativity in the mix so that other teams go, you know what, I heard that he's this, that, the other, we're going to go in that direction. That's usually somebody kind of, you know, throwing out stories. And Isaiah alluded to, I was throwing out stories about his negativity too because I wanted nobody to go around him. But when Kevin McHale called me, it was like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. If you don't get him, I'm, I'm definitely going to pick him up. So I think there's a lot of jockeying going around. Uh, I, I think Carolina would be making a big mistake uh, grabbing the, the Alabama quarterback. Not to say he's not a good quarterback, but Stroud is your guy. Don't let anybody sway you or deter you away from that. Stroud is your guy. So if you don't go, and I've been talking to folks in, in, in Carolina, some of my cousins and friends, and they're they're hooked on Stroud. But, you know, to hear this news that they're going another way with this, Carolina, uh, this is a good move. This is, you, 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 you're in a good position. Don't mess it up. Ice? Yeah, I mean, I I, I was really thought, I thought they, because, I mean, they brought everybody, they brought the owner, they brought everybody to Columbus. And they did the same thing. They went over to Alabama. So I'm interested to see what they're talking about. But they really like Young for some reason or another. And I don't know. Maybe it's a lot of 
hype and they're going to, you know, blow smoke rings. But um, I'm telling you, they talk about uh, Houston also maybe passing by and letting him drop. If he drops to four, it will be a gift to Indianapolis. Stroud, that is. It will be a gift. But I'm telling you, Carolina, do what you do. Houston, Texans, listen to me. If Stroud is available at number two, you better pick him. You want you want game changer, and I think you got a young coach there that wants to win some games right away. He's more of a defensive guy. You want things turned real quickly. Here's what you do, Houston. You pick Stroud at number two. You got the tenth pick. Pick up his boy Smith and Jenga. Let's get that Ohio State combination running right back. Let's score some touchdowns. That's how you do that. That's how you do that. You want some excitement in Houston? You want something to kind of take that bad taste of Deshaun Watson out your mouth? Y'all make this combination work right now, and then y'all come see me. Try to tell y'all about Justin Fields. Thought I was laughing about that too. Change Chicago around. Trying to tell y'all, y'all, y'all watch out what's happening in Columbus. But you gonna fire Ryan Day? That should have been my last second shot. Anyway. <laughs> All right, let's go into last second shot. It's a black. Yeah, I, I I look at some of these coaches, man. The pressure that they're under is a job really worth it. It really is when you think about it. You know, everybody's basically, no matter where you are, they're clawing, they're clawing, they're clawing. Sometimes, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think sometimes, I know it pays a lot. I'd rather be home with the cop on myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ice water? Yeah, man. I was going to talk about the NFL, talk a little baseball, but no, I'm going to stick with the NBA. Isn't it ironic when you know everybody said the NBA is their uh the talent is down, they're not playing right. Anthony Davis hurt all the time. Every time we want to just throw it away, they find a way to get you to pull you back in. <laughs> Got you watching, like, but y'all this is no, they ain't this and this and that. They every time they say that, it's like you want to get rid of the NBA because it's horrible. They don't play basketball like they used to, it ain't the 80s. All of a sudden, they had this way to throw this pixie dust on you go. Damn, well, that don't look too bad anymore. That look good. Looks pretty good to me. So that's how they do this, man. And I think that uh, they they have a way. Along with the players, they really give you a lot of energy. Uh, it gets exciting, and they they have some of the most talented uh, athletes in the world, and they know how to play their game well, and also they know how to market their game well too. So for those that are still naysayers about the NBA, you can say what you want to. But you know you're gonna still watch. Yeah, I'm one of those naysayers because uh, I don't know if that pixie dust has hit me yet. But I can't wait till it's over. I just can't wait. This season's too long. I can't wait till it's over. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe the pixie oh, dust will hit me during the Eastern and Western Conference championship. But there are two stories. Uh, the NBA. Maybe we'll talk about this next week. Um, they're going to mandatory combines in 2024, meaning that if you don't go to the combines, you're not going to be put in the draft. That's going to be interesting. But my story, I said on Black uh, Thor's show last week on When Black Men Talk. Check it out on the podcast on Blog Talk Radio. My hero for the year. There's a man of the year. I know I'm messing up his name. Akraf Hakimi, the footballer oh. from Paris. Um, he's from Morocco. In his divorce, he put everything in his mama's name. Mama was right. When mama say something, mama's right put everything in mama's name. His wife wanted to divorce him. She gets nothing. Matter of fact, he's getting half of her stuff. Now, all of a sudden, I hear rumors that she wants to call off the divorce. Don't do it, brother. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hakimi, salute, brother. Salute. Not many men can tell the tale. Salute. <laughs> Hold on. Keep that same energy. She wanted a divorce? Hold on, get half her stuff. That man deserve a holiday. He deserve a national holiday. <laughs> national holiday. Tell you right now. Look, 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 hey, look, hey. Mom, look. I, I want to come back, baby. Mama didn't already sold your cat, baby. <laughs> Mama said no. <laughs> Mom, Mama didn't sold the cat. The cat is with another family. <laughs> Put everything in Mama's name. 
Matter of fact, it was some rappers who, who said that. Uh, who did that? Some rappers from New Orleans. And they did the uh, the, the song they sampled was from Gilkins Island. And it was like, put everything in mama's name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dealing fly. Yeah, they did that. They had the first idea. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. He, he is. No, mom, his mama's a genius. I'm here to tell you, man. I'm serious. He didn't have a national holiday. They have they have bars open bar everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, man. Ooh. Ooh, that cat right there. When mm. I saw that story, I kept rubbing my eyes like, wait a minute, no, wait, you, you can do that? You can actually do that? His mama can... is genius. She ain't know nothing until they went to court. That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's the way to do it. There was another guy, the older guy, who married a younger chick. They were married for 30 years, but they had a vacation 10 years before she wanted a divorce after the 30 years. They went on vacation in, in, the, in the Dominican Republic. And I didn't know this, but when you go there, you can file for divorce without the other party knowing. And if they don't respond, you're divorced. So when she filed for divorce, he was like, um, we're already divorced. We've been divorced for 10 years. <laughs> That's idea number two. <laughs> idea number three, there's a famous uh, Mexican um, star on TV. He's like a comedic star. Um, he married this uh, well-to-do actress in, in Mexico. Um, they, stayed, they had the wedding, everything. And then when she was tired of being married, she wanted a divorce. He was like, oh, I had that off stage. Those are all actors. So we're, we're really, really never married. <laughs> Hey man, you trying to get people hurt, man? Bro, oh, man. I'm, you trying, know what? I'm, I'm trying, trying to see the man. Sam. I'm trying to I'm gonna, you, Sam. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you something, man. You should change the names to respect the innocent. That's gotta you gotta put a book out, bro. You gotta book out <laughs> how to get married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>